Now, this is a, uh, a fine moment for the University of Nebraska at Kearney, and one we have not had since 2008. We will confer an honorary degree upon an individual who has distinguished himself through extraordinary achievements in fine arts. Senior Vice Chancellor for Academic and Student Affairs, Charles Bisek. Charlie, would you please escort the candidate to the podium and provide the introduction for the honorary degree? The doctoral hood will be placed on the candidate by the University of Nebraska Regents Tim Clare and Paul Kenny. Dr. Bisek. Chancellor Christensen, it is my honor to introduce writer, screenwriter, executive producer, and creative director Jonathan Bokenkamp as a candidate for an honorary degree, Doctor of Fine Arts. We are proud to call Mr. Bokenkamp one of our own. A native of Kearney and a graduate of Kearney High School, he attended the University of Nebraska at Kearney from 1991 to 1993, taking journalism, art, and music classes. That prepared him for the University of Southern California School of Cinematic Arts, where he graduated with honors in 1995. Since then, he has become one of the top and one of the most well-known young writers in the entertainment industry. His credits include The Blacklist, television series which has been nominated for Golden Globe, People's Choice, and Emmy Awards. Numerous stories and screenplays for major motion pictures and two documentaries. Time, imagination, and creativity were his tools when shortly after he and his family moved back to Kearney from Los Angeles in 2007, he spearheaded efforts to restore the world theater a promising but long neglected landmark that was built in downtown Kearney in 1927. Artfully transformed, it reopened in 2012 as a theater that specializes in reviving classic films and featuring new art house releases. It is a fine arts gem and a source of community pride. It remains active, he remains active with the World Theater as its founder and creative director. Chancellor Christensen, it is my honor to present John Bokenkamp for the honorary degree, Doctor of Fine Arts. Congratulations. In honor of his outstanding accomplishments and stellar career, in recognition of his uncommon ability to bring joy and entertainment by writing stories on paper that come to life on the screen. In gratitude for his loyalty to the campus and his service to the community, the University of Nebraska hereby confers upon Jonathan Thomas Bogenkamp the honorary degree of Doctor of Fine Arts. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to welcome now Dr. John Bogenkamp uh, to the stage. Somehow, I've looked out here this morning. For those of you who watch The Blacklist, I keep expecting to have Red be somewhere in one of the corridors. I was hoping for a fedora. Well, uh, yeah, so if any of you have a fedora, we may give you some attention. Our absolute thrill and honor I give to you Dr. John Bogan Camp. John. Thank you. Thank you. I'm confident that if my uh, kids had any idea that you guys were going to say so many nice things, they would not have skipped school uh, to be here for this, probably. 
Um, thank you, Chancellor Christensen and the Board of Regents, the university. This really is an incredible honor. Uh, it, uh, it means a great deal to me, uh, especially I, I'm, I'm not an academic. Uh, in fact, I was a guy who at uh, USC wasted countless hours studying, you know, B movies like uh, Motel Hell and, uh, you know, Attack of the Crab Monsters. So hopefully this balances something out in the universe. But, but, but thank you and welcome, welcome uh, to the faculty, alumni, family and friends, and most importantly, the class of 2019, you did it, right? Congrats on what is, by any measure, a tremendous accomplishment. You worked hard for this. I know that, this crowd knows this, all of these people who have supported you in this journey know that, and they're super proud of you. Which really is why it's an honor to, to be able to speak uh, to you today. Uh, like I said, I attended UNK. My parents met here when this was uh, Kearney State College. I have friends graduating today, Jesse and Bill, congratulations. This was and remains to be my home. Uh, my professional life is in Los Angeles, uh, and I am a screenwriter. I get paid to make stuff up. Uh, and I love writing for TV, but uh, on, on some days, it, in all honesty, can be a total dumpster fire, right? There are nonstop rewrites, there are preposterous deadlines, wild personalities, to put it mildly. But the distractions are endless, and so for me, the great thing about working in Hollywood but living here is that it sort of puts all of those distractions in perspective for me, and it, it, it helps me remember that my only real goal is, is just to tell a good story. And for me, the best part of any story is the beginning, right? Because it is filled with firsts, the first kiss, the first crazy roommate, the first day as a college graduate. And today you're starting to write your story. And I can assure you it is the beginning of what will be a wild and unexpected ride. It's, uh, as we say in the business, fade in. You are free to start your career, start your family, don't know what you want to start, go explore, travel, uh, make some mistakes. Just think about your story and what you want it to be about. Because whatever you do next, I can promise you it is going to be very different from this. And I wish that I had some great, you know, sage advice, some wisdom I could offer, and I thought about this a lot. And parents, you're feel free to cover your ears for this part, but re really, my only advice I have is this, don't get a job, okay? <laughs> now, I don't mean don't work or make money, do both, but whatever you do next, this story you're about to write, this dream that I pray you will chase down, man, you better love it, you know? You, you better love it so much that it is immune to the bills you're going to have to pay and the hours you're going to have to work and what anyone considers to be realistic, because it might not be realistic. I sort of hope it isn't. And, and I'm sure that this sounds like a plan for disaster, because if you're anything like I was when I graduated from college, you are dead broke. It is likely tomato soup and grilled cheese sandwiches for the foreseeable future. And it, and it might be a slog, but, but do yourself a favor and don't worry about the money, because if you're doing something you love, something that, that makes you want to get up out of bed in the morning, I promise the rest will fall into place. All the, the rent money and the car payments and, and the dental plans, all that nonsense adult stuff will work itself out if you love what you do. And I'm telling you this from experience because, trust me, there is no more like, unlikely way to go out into the world and earn a living <laughs> than, than by sitting behind the keyboard of a Mac Classic 2 in your underwear trying to write the next great American screenplay. Sorry for that image. Uh, but but, but I, I, I had a horrible business plan. I didn't really have a plan. <laughs> but I was lucky that my parents never really said, uh, yeah, that's a terrible idea. Don't do that. Go get a job. And, and so through ignorance or blind passion and probably a little bit of both, I uh, thought that I would somehow have a career in Hollywood. And weirdly, I got one, uh, despite the D-plus in sophomore English that uh, Vern Planbeck gave me, which I'm not at all uh, still bitter about. But, but I, grew, I, I, I did grow a career, and it was hard. 
Uh, when I moved to Hollywood, I literally knew nobody. I mean, not a soul. Uh, by the time I graduated from USC, I had a degree in film production, which I swiftly used to land a job at Universal Studios, <clears throat> valet parking cars. And um, uh, uh, one night, uh, I kid you not, after an eight-hour shift, I made $13 in tips. I am sure my parents were so proud. Um, but, but I was writing during the day, and I was, I was treating my writing like a career, and at night, I was making money, although not a lot. And, and on paper, it made zero sense. I, I was a college-educated valet parking attendant with over $130,000 in student loans, okay? By the way, um, I, I did actually park David Hasselhoff's car, and as a kid, I was a huge Knight Rider fan. It's probably too young for any of you guys, but for me, it was like driving, uh, driving Kit, um, uh, which was amazing, but uh, the Hoff didn't tip. Um, uh, uh, the, the point is, uh, it took a lot for me to, to, to sort of ignore the temptation to do something more practical, right? Something that may have, may have been a more sensible compromise. But I'm glad I didn't compromise, and you guys shouldn't either. Uh, even when this dream seems utterly impossible, it doesn't matter if you want to open an online business or uh, uh, travel the world or become a professional figure skater. Your dream is going to be very fragile these next couple years. People are going to tell you it won't work, that uh, you're not ready, that it's been done before. Well, guess what? That's nonsense. One of my uh, favorite, this, this screenwriter, William Goldman, revered screenwriter, he wrote, uh, screenwriter, he wrote Butch Cassidy the Sundance Kid, uh, The Princess Bride, Misery. This guy's great. And in 1983, he wrote a book called Adventures in the Screen Trade, which was sort of his musings about his life in Hollywood as a writer. And one of the things that he said about Hollywood, and it is true in life, he said, nobody knows anything. Nobody knows what movie's going to hit or what actress is going to win the Oscar. Nobody knows what TV show is going to explode. Nobody knows. So you have to believe in your story, whatever it is. And when people tell you it's not going to happen, please remember William Goldman. Nobody knows anything. I, I told myself that a lot. And eventually, I did graduate from my job, valet parking cars at Universal. Um, actually, I was, I was uh, fired. And so I, I, uh, uh, I got a job at the old spaghetti factory on Sunset, which weirdly did feel sort of like a promotion because it was on Sunset Boulevard. Um, but I kept telling myself, nobody knows anything, right? Don't quit. And gradually, this thing that I love, writing, started to weirdly pay the bills. Whatever the, whatever the movies were, whether they were made or not, I had the opportunity to, to write for Angelina Jolie and Halle Berry and Bruce Willis and, and Julia Roberts, and it was great. And you're going to have similar success if you just stay authentic to who you are. Your passion is what is going to help you navigate the dark times, and there will be dark times, and you probably won't see them coming. Lord knows I didn't. I was writing movies. I was, I was meeting uh, Jack Black at my friend's movie premiere. I was in the room when Julia Roberts is trying on Oscar gowns. Life was good until it wasn't. <laughs> Cut to 2006. I'm pitching movies, and I'm trying to get the next job, and these jobs are getting harder and harder to find, and there's that dirty little three-letter word, job. I couldn't figure out why, but my career sort of went cold. My, my agents wouldn't call me back. There's a Writers Guild strike, so even if I could get work, I couldn't work. Then in 2008, the, the Great Recession sort of lands like a grenade in the oatmeal bowl, and thank God, I, work wasn't all I had. Right? I have this great wife, and we had decided, long before my career started to circle the drain, that we wanted to raise our kids in Nebraska. Like it will be for you, this place it will always be part of my story. My wife and I are both from here. We wanted to raise our kids here, and so we moved home, uh, which is not the, be <laughs> the best choice for an unemployed screenwriter. And uh, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, movie studios advertising the open writing assignments in the back of the Carney Hub. Uh, but, but even if somebody was advertising, they weren't calling me. And, and, and yet I still loved writing. I, I, I loved it, and I knew that moving home was the right choice for me.
and for my family, and it took me 20 years to figure out what I wanted my story to be, right? I wanted my story to be a writer and to live here, and so I kept writing. And I thought, who knows, maybe I'll sell a script. <laughs> just because I live in the middle of nowhere doesn't mean that I can't, and, and just because I've never written a TV episode in my life doesn't mean that I can't. And so I found a script online, I sort of found the template, and I thought, okay, I, I can do this. And I was also, by the way, thinking, William Goldman, William Goldman, nobody knows anything. What I didn't know, but what was different this time is, I wasn't trying to sell anything, right? I wasn't trying to make the studio happy. I didn't care what Julia Roberts' producer thought of my script. If Hollywood didn't like my silly TV script, what's the worst that's going to happen? They're going to send me home? I'm home, right? I just wrote something that that surprised me and I thought was weird and, 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 it, and it felt silly and fun and like me. And that script was this TV show called The Blacklist and, and all of the sudden I'm working with James Spader and I have an office at Paramount and I'm not, I'm not <laughs> waiting tables at the old spaghetti factory. I'm feverishly rewriting scripts at a little cafe on Sunset Boulevard as, as LA City buses are going by with billboards of my show on the side of the bus, a show which is shooting in New York where there are now nearly 400 people working to bring to life this script that I wrote in Nebraska, in my underwear, by the way. <laughs> you know what, when, when the presidents of Sony TV and, uh, took me out to celebrate uh, and, and I, <laughs> I told them where I was from, they thought I was nuts. The brass at NBC, uh, I'm sorry, you're from where? That's, uh, is that near Kentucky? There's a lot of that sort of stuff. The thing is that this thing I was mildly ashamed of, moving home, is actually what makes me unlike anyone else in Hollywood. The, do you know how many TV writers there are in Kearney? That's part of my story. It is what makes me different. And your story is what's going to make you different, not just with your career, but with a life balance, right? For me, that's writing, it's family, it's a little bit of volunteer work, it's being invested in my community that helps me stay just marginally sane while working in Hollyweird. Which is why I would suggest, and I, I really mean this, don't forget this place. This community, because as you had said, even if you're not from here, you're from here now. Uh, you can live in and be from any number of places, and it took me a long time to figure that out. But the friends you made here, the mistakes you made, the discoveries you have made about yourself, that's part of your story. So if you embrace what you love, and if you do it in an authentic way, if you embrace what makes you different, you will stand out from the crowd, I promise, because we are entering a time where individuality isn't just celebrated, it's rewarded. You are what you are selling, not some degree, but your story, the flaws and all. And by the way, speaking of selling, episode 131 of The Blacklist airs tonight on NBC. It's at 8 p.m. 7 central, so if you're celebrating, set your DVRs. But guys, look, the punchline is this, okay? You did it. You're a college graduate, and nobody can ever take that away from you. You are off to an incredible start, but it is just that. It is a start. It is a beginning. And it is time for you to go write your story. So make it one that only you can tell, flaws and all. And when people tell you you're nuts, remember, nobody knows anything. Okay? Congratulations. Thank you.